ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and continue to enjoy your desserts. At this time, we have a special presentation. We are proud to present the United States Army Chorus, based out of Fort Myer, Virginia, and led by Sergeant First Class Dan Capoletta. The chorus was formed in 1956 as the vocal counterpart of the United States Army Band, Pershing's Own. In addition to performing the President's visiting dignitaries and heads of state, the chorus has appeared in our nation's most prominent concert halls. The dedication and professionalism brought to each performance by the members of this group have established a reputation of excellence which is recognized around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the world-renowned United States Army Chorus. Infantry Division.
Thank you very much. And I want to tell you, you all sound wonderful. You may not know, but that was a test. Sergeant Major Daly, they passed. Uh, again, thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. We're going to close our program today with a song by singer-songwriter Lee Greenwood. We had the pleasure to sing this song with Mr. Greenwood for the 2015 NHL Winter Classic, as well as recently for 2023 USO Awards Banquet. We leave you today with God Bless the USA. If tomorrow all the things were gone I worked for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I'd thank my lucky stars To be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom And they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the ones who died Who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee Across the plains of Texas From sea to shining sea from Detroit down to Houston and New York to L.A. Well, there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say that I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free, and I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the ones who died who gave that right to me and I gladly Stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the world-renowned United States Army Corps, let's give him one more big round of applause.
Thank you, Army Corps. You are an inspiration to all of us, and we greatly appreciate with you being with us today. You make every ceremony special. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting near that time, but we're not there yet. <laughs> At this time, I would like to introduce our Sergeant Major of the United States Army, SMA Michael R. Weimer. I know you're dying to know. I know. I can feel the tension. I can feel it. I remember SMA Grinston last year dragging this out. I remember it. But that's not what we're doing right now. What we're getting ready to do is something pretty special. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to get to that. So what we're going to do right now is we're getting ready to talk about something that uh, truly I didn't, I didn't fully understand the breadth and depth and scope of uh, the significance of this. But we're getting ready to announce the Honorary Sergeant Major of the Army. And I wanted a couple data points for folks to understand what, what this means, how it came about, because uh, SMA Daly was part of this. As a matter of fact, it started on his watch um, in 2015. And this is no small feat to be named the Honorary Sergeant Major of the Army. This is decided by all the former sergeant majors of the Army. You remember that group we took the time to introduce in the beginning? Yeah, that's a, that is a pretty, pretty uh, ruthless bunch of folks with standards. Like, there's standards, and then there's standards. Um, and I'm here to tell you, uh, this individual, it was unanimous. Unanimous, right? And I was worried, or unanimous, I was worried um, with the shutdown that uh, we were going to miss the opportunity to truly celebrate this. And so I'm here to tell you I'm excited to see this room filled because the individual that we uh, decided upon is here and he has his family with him. And uh, I want to mention a few things about this individual real quick. He's a native of Mobile, Alabama. No, SMA Grinston didn't have anything to do with it, but yeah, Alabama. He enlisted in the Army in December 1961. He served 32 years in the Army and retired in 1993. And, and you, you weren't paying attention. I was paying attention. Uh, it wasn't your job to. But I'm pretty sure he stood up four times. I think it was four times when we were singing, uh, singing those division songs right there. And then there's a few other formations he was in that just don't have division songs. Uh, he's a command sergeant major, served in multiple organizations, include the 2nd Infantry Division and U.S. Army Operations Command. Special Operations Command. In 68, he completed Special Forces training and other courses to include Infantry Advance, Jump Master, Scuba, Jungle Operation. I'm, I'm not sure there isn't anything he hasn't accomplished over the years. He's been inducted into the Ranger Hall of Fame. He, he's inducted into the U.S. Army Sergeant Major Academy Hall of Fame and the Special Operations Mountain Man, Old and Bold, 2015. It is my honor He's, oh, by the way, he's accompanied with his awesome family here today. I know you're going to take a moment to, to, to highlight them, Jimmy, so I'm not going to steal that from you. But it's my honor today to introduce the 2023 Honorary Sergeant Major of the Armor, Army, Jimmy Spencer. Come on up there. I always wanted a standing ovation, but unfortunately it, it was before I spoke, so I guess, but I'm going to count that. Uh, that was a wonderful introduction, SMA, and uh, in fact it was so good I can't wait to hear what I have to say. Uh, this whole process started for me about, uh, about three weeks ago. Uh, I was sitting at home just trying to be the kind of person my dog thinks I am. And the phone rang, and it's the SMA telling me that I had been selected as the next uh, honorary sergeant major of the Army. And uh, just to let you know that uh, what I experienced at that moment was something that the uh, social scientists would refer to as a significant emotional event. Uh, and I really don't think that thank you is a strong enough word to convey how 
grateful I am uh, for this great honor. Uh, my, my journey uh, started over half a century ago when I joined a team of teens. I walked into a recruiting station, and from that point on in my life, I've never been alone. I've always had someone to my left, someone to my right, and shoulder to shoulder, we faced whatever the future had in store for us. There's always been somebody behind me, and that person was willing and able to come to my rescue should I, should I falter. There's always been somebody in front of me to show me the way. That's part of being a team of teams. And when I left the Army for the last time, took off my uniform, I joined another team, Team AUSA, at both the local chapter and the national level. And our mission in life is to take care of soldiers and their family members, to make sure that uh, our young people who come into our Army, join our formations, have the best training, have the best equipment, have the best leadership that this, this nation is capable of producing. So the only thing I'd really like for you to know about me is I was a soldier, I am a soldier, and I'll always be a soldier. And I am very grateful and thankful for this, this opportunity. And my sincere wish for everyone in this room is that you may be safely in heaven 30 minutes before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for this great honor. And hua. Come on up here, Jimmy. Where'd you go? There you go. I was like, what are you doing? Get back up here. Come on. So he didn't, he didn't mention who accompanied him. Come on up here. Um, Julie escorted her up here, please, for me. So this is his wife, Susan, who's been with you how many years now? Uh, 50 something. Uh, 50 something. <laughs> yeah. So everything we talked about, this is who's been along that journey with him. He also has his uh, daughter here and his youngest granddaughter, correct? That's right, yeah. So, so pretty awesome. Um, and by the way, uh, Jimmy's got a massive golf tournament. I know there's a bunch of golfers out there that he's always looking to raise money, and I don't golf, so he's, he's looking for talent. So you gotta take full, advan full advantage of that. So I, I, I gotta give the, the, uh, the choir another shout out. I know uh, that, that, that gets me stirred up every single time. So this next individual that I'm going to introduce, um, pretty special. A lot of us have the, you know, we have the luxury of working with him every day in the E-ring. Um, and I've been getting to know him, I've been getting to know him pretty well here since about 2 May. Um, but, but what really inspired me, uh, just his latest thing that inspired me was uh, the 10 miler. And so he came across, he ran the 10 miler and finished with his beautiful bride holding hands across that 10 miler. I gotta tell you, sir, I, I won't go any further with it because it'll get me all choked up, but uh, that's the leader you are. You've been a servant leader this whole time. I'm honored to have you here to do this with us today, with this group of people. So let me introduce to you the, the Director of the Army Staff, Lieutenant General Pyatt. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> Finishing the Army 10 miler yesterday, my wife, who's much faster than me, has run her 31st marathon just last week in uh, Finger Lakes, was really pulling me across, I think is what it really was, SMA, but I like your version better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang on to that one. That's how it really happened. That's how it really happened. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. What, what an honor it is. Sergeant Major Daly, Sergeant Major Weimer, our new Sergeant Major of the Army, and all the former Sergeant Majors of the Army 
Wow, it's just a real honor to be in the presence of so many national treasures and so many of our soldiers. My name is, is Walt Pyatt. I'm the director of the Army staff. They call me the DAS. I know I'm doing good if they keep the D on it. <laughs> Sorry, Major Weimers kept that on. I want to show you a picture of me when I was a private. To Sergeant Major Daly found out that I was former enlisted and said, you must get a picture of you when you were a squad leader. And I couldn't find one. But you know, when a Sergeant Major tells you to do something, you try to do it, you come through. So this is the best I could do, Private Pyatt, 1979, basic training. One of the hardest things I ever did in my life was get the Good Conduct Medal. <laughs> and I became a squad leader because my squad leader didn't get the Good Conduct Medal. And it was a proud job that I was a squad leader in Alpha Company, 2nd Battalion, 503rd Infantry, then at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, the 101st Airborne. One of the things, and I don't have to tell you this, but one of the things that makes our Army so successful is the people. People like you, people who are tough and go far beyond the normal to achieve success. And should any of us fall in battle, any one of us is expected to fill that gap, to lead that way, to bring up the rear. This is natural and it's expected. It's kind of why you got me today, because there is no Vice Chief of Staff of the Army right now, and as the DAS, I get the honor of fulfilling his roles. And he's got a really hard job, but this gig is pretty cool. So I'm kind of glad that we don't have a vice today because I probably wouldn't be up here talking. So thank you, Senator from Alabama. Um, I did tell the Secretary of the Army, I said yesterday, I said I can thank the Senator because I got to run one more Army 10 miler while still on active duty. She said, you can run it when you're retired, too, General Pyatt. And I said, oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> OK, got my orders. Uh, but in combat, many of, many of you have experienced this. It can often be horrific and demand the most from all of us. And I want to tell you about a story about a young man that answered that call. Corporal Timothy Ahern, when he was fighting in France in 1918. Timothy A. Hearn was born on December 15, 19, 1898 in New Haven, Connecticut, son of Irish immigrants. And at the age of 18, after graduating from St. Francis Catholic School, he enlisted in the 26th Regiment as an infantryman with the intent of fighting against Pancho Villa in our southwest border. After his service in a Mexican expedition in November 1916, his unit mustered out of service. But he was remobilized in February of the next year after the United States declared war on Germany and he redesignated as the Connecticut National Guard's 102nd Infantry Regiment. And the 102nd rose to quick fame when on April 20th, 1918, and engaged in the United States' first major infantry battle of World War I in France. Despite heavy bombardments, and the eventual cap capture of the town by the enemy forces, the soldiers of the 102nd never gave up and initiated a counterattack that regained the lost American trenches. This was America's first encounter with horrors of trench and chemical warfare, climbing out of the protection of the trenches and into enemy fire in the area that became known as no man's land left many soldiers very fearful. However, according to a local newspaper, Corporal Ahern's coolness and courage under fire left others surprised and motivated to follow his lead. The article continued to state that Ahern was always the first when the boys went over the top. He seemed to bear a charmed life. And although the boys dropped on all sides, the gallant corporal, he pressed on. What a remarkable leader. Where it was difficult, he was present. Where it was dangerous, he was first. His ability to lead those around him would become instrumental in the days following this battle. On October 27, 1918, an enemy attack 
killed or incapacitated every officer and sergeant in his company. With only 17 able soldiers still standing, Ahern did what no corporal probably ever expects to do while in combat. He took command of his company. Under his leadership, the shattered remnants of the unit successfully held the line for the remainder of the battle. And once the bullets and shells stopped firing, Ahern sent a message to his regimental commander. Without any paper to write on, he used a letter that he received from his mother, and he wrote on the back. The message was to inform the regimental commander that he had taken command of the company. He stated, I've made two skeleton platoons of four squads apiece. He went on to write that Private Kenny is made acting first sergeant. Then he stated in his letter, sir, what are your orders? He made clear that he was ready for any duty that he could be called upon to perform. He also said, I'm ready to receive replacements. <laughs> and he signed it, Ahern, Corporal Commanding Company C. Think about this. The presence of mind to form a company out of a shattered remains of his unit. They were devastated, and no one would have blamed them for being combat ineffective. We would do it today. This company would be P4 and C4 not ready for combat. The number of people in the company would have rendered the battalion and the entire regiment, not just this company, not ready for combat. Yet they were more than ready. They were combat ready, tough and unyielding. Corporal Ahern did what few could do. When faced with an impossible task, he developed a solution. He made his readiness about what he had, not about what he didn't have. This is something you will all have to do as well. Anyone can lead when conditions are perfect, but you have demonstrated in this competition that you can lead and outperform most when under the harshest conditions. Your future assignments will require you to do more like Corporal Ahern. You will never have enough, never have all your people, all your equipment, but you must ensure what you do have is ready. Our nation is not going to ask if we are ready. They will expect it. As did Corporal Ahern that day, in addition to keeping his soldiers focused on keeping the line, he also made at least one trip in no man's land and while under heavy machine gun fire, successfully retrieved a wounded soldier from imminent death. For his gallantry on that fateful day, he was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross. Like so many other young warriors who fought in World War I, when Ahern returned home, he suffered from the side effects of exposure to chemical weapons. Just three days after his actions in Verdun, he fell victim to an enemy gas attack during the Argonne Offensive, and he had to spend time in an army hospital in France. Although he survived the war, his body and his mind continued to suffer. Upon his discharge from the Army, he moved back into his family home with his parents and two of his younger siblings and found work as a stenographer in a local office. His mother, brother, and sister moved to New York after his father died. He decided this was a perfect opportunity to set out on another adventure. And for the next five years, Ahern wandered the country from coast to coast, trying to make a living as a migrant worker. And on January 25th, 1925, Timothy Francis Ahern passed away in San Francisco from respiratory complications of his exposure to mustard gas. He was 25. 
In 1937, the New Haven chapter of the Yankee Division Veterans Association dedicated a statue of Ahern at the West River Memorial Park where his memory and his story continue to live on. You have shown, all of you have shown that you can do hard things like Corporal Ahern. And as it did on Corporal Ahern, this profession takes a toll on all of us. And we all need to take care of one another. As hard as we fight in combat or in competition, we should fight for each other daily, building cohesive teams that have each other's back, recognizing when others are suffering or at risk, and intervening to help our fellow soldier. Lead with strength, but also lead with compassion is what makes our Army strong. We are a value-based organization built on trust and respect and do not let these values ever weaken. Many are calling our military weak. We are far, far from it. We are strong, intelligent, lethal, compassionate, and empathetic. For those who say we are weak and no longer tough, I remind them of this William Francis Butler quote. And I quote him now, the nation that will insist upon drawing a broad line of demarcation between the fighting person and the thinking person is liable to find its fighting done by fools and its thinking done by cowards, unquote. Being strong means being smart. So do more than just be the best squad. Be the best you and bring everyone with you. Anyone who thinks this nation is weak and the world is without threat, look at current events today in Israel, where any nation or any adversary to freedom can build a lethal army on very low-tech equipment and can kill, kill without, discretion, without discretion. It takes a warrior to respond. It takes a warrior to apply lethality and to kill the enemies of our nation. But we must also remember it is our duty to protect the innocent. And as a soldier, all of us, we've all deployed all over the world and faced new cultures, faced new religions. Many tried to kill us because we were different or because we were in their land. I served in Afghanistan and Iraq, and I've seen up close the strength of a U.S. soldier. I witnessed many stand in the face of sheer terror, and yet, still found the strength to move forward. No matter how bad the situation, we kept moving forward. We lost friends, and for a time, our nation lost hope, yet we kept moving forward. I would learned not to judge, but to accept the differences of others, to meet them where they are, as my brothers and my sisters. I learned to listen without judgment, to speak without shouting, to live without hatred. These are the values of honor, the values of a soldier, so that one day we can all live as one, not to force others to the same ideas, but embracing the diversity of human thought. I learned to be better and not to be afraid of what is different, but rather to seek new perspectives without fear. Many people thank us for our service when we are out in public. And awkwardly, I always say with humility, you are welcome. But what Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston told me and taught me to say was to look them back in the eye and shake their hand and say, you are worth it. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Try this. The next time someone comes up to you and you don't know what to say, look them in the eye. When they say, thank you for your service, say, you are worth it. They're probably going to cry, but they are worth it. This nation's worth it. It's why we do what we do. I've learned a lot from SMA Grinston, one of our best warriors this nation has ever seen, but I will always keep that one dear to me. Thank you, SMA. You're all worth the pain and sacrifice that we service members experience. Our civilians, our, our nation, need to be reminded of what we do. In your future, there will be challenges and uncertainty in possible situations that you will have no idea how to handle. Remember 
Corporal Ahern, who faced the impossible and yet never gave up. As long as you have some soldiers with you, never give up. So in the words of the 10th Mountain Division, no matter what, keep moving, and we'll all meet at the top. I'm so very proud to serve with all of you, for you are all, all worth it. This will defend. Thank you very much. Now, you can ask any Army individual that works in the Pentagon, and I mean any of them, to include the Secretary and the Chief, what's the hardest job in the Pentagon? And the hardest job is the Director of the Army Staff. Because when I was with General Milley, he said, that's the guy that gets to do everything I don't want to do. <laughs> so there's one thing to have the hardest job. It's another thing to be the best at it and do it for the longest that anybody has ever done. Sir, thank you for your incredible service and sacrifice to this great nation and all you do for our Army. Thank you. So you know what time it is? It's time for me to read a bunch of stuff so we can stall this a little longer. That's right. This year's Best Warrior Competition actually dates back to 2002, when the Chief of Staff of the Army, then General Eric K. Shinseki, and then the Sergeant Major of the Army, I don't even want to say it out loud, but I have to, Jack Tilly, made the decision to culminate all the NCO and Soldier of the Year competitions across the Army at the Department of the Army level. In 2009, as part of the Year of the Non-Commissioned Officer celebrations, the Chief of Staff of the Army, George W. Casey, Jr., and the SMA decided to formally name the trophy presented to the NCO and Soldier of the Year as a way to honor the legacy of SMA Jack Tilly and what this competition does for our Army to enhance self-development and self-study and to set training standards for our force. Then in 2021, under the leadership of SMA Grinston, the Army announced the creation of United States Army's annual Best Squad Competition to recognize the best squad from across our Army. Along with the announcement of the Best Warriors, this year we will announce the results of the United States Army's Best Squad Competition. Now, are you ready to figure out who that is? It's not time. We have to watch a video first. As a prelude to the big announcement, please watch this short video of the 2023 Best Squad competition. So it just shows that we're working to be a cohesive unit. See, we, got some, we got the top teams in the country here. We're here to compete. We're here to attempt to win, to defend the title of the best squads. It's just like keep things simple, um, go to one event at a time. It was a tough assessment, but the team pulled through and did well. It's definitely a mental game for me. It's definitely challenging, but it's very motivating to see everybody out here running, trying their best. I've never done land nav here before, and it's a lot different. Nice, different challenge. You gotta trust, trust what your training is and just keep going. Hey, you, this is me. Over. Today we're doing the EIB drawings. Back tomorrow. Medical is a huge part of what we do as soldiers, especially as infantrymen, as rangers. One day you might be put in that situation where you have to save somebody's life. Board. We train for this non-stop. We do nothing but train for this, and we've been ready for this competition for months now.
So this morning we started off with a 12 mile ruck. I would say overall, um, the ruck, it, it comes down to an individual event, but since it is a squad event, I would say taking care of my soldiers is always the first thing on my mind. Two minutes of plenty of time to shoot 30 rounds. What got us through that difficult time definitely was just the camaraderie that we have built together over these like last almost a year of just competing with each other and training with each other so we know each other in and out. I'm real proud that uh the Army in itself has put this long and grueling event together uh, for soldiers like us to really see where we are and really test who we are as our, our characters and our, and our fighting spirit. And now, the announcement and the answer to the question you've all been waiting for, which squad is the best squad and who is the non-commissioned officer and soldier of the year for America's Army for 2023? I don't know. The only person in the room, in the whole Army for a matter of fact, that can answer that question is the executive officer of the Sergeant Major of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sergeant Major Christy Brady. I'm trying to see where the rest of my green stand is. Okay. You want to say something? Oh. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Uh, Hold on. I will say something. Okay. Very well. Actually, I will say something. Hold up. Hey, all of that squad, stand up. The only thing I want to remind you, and it really is for all of us, is that we exist to fight and win. That's it. And you represent what it means to be ready for when we say, this we will defend. And I couldn't be more proud of every single team that participated in this event. 
Well done. Now let's find out who won. <laughs> cool. All right, let me first by saying, uh, Lieutenant General Pyatt, thank you so much for being here today. The words that you've shared with us, the wisdom that you've parted are ones that we will remember always and share um, for, for centuries and years to come. So thank you, sir, so much. I'm so glad that many in the room here today got to hear him speak because I have got to hear him speak over the last year being on the staff and it sure, surely is you know, a great honor and very monumental words, sir, so thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm, as you know, Sergeant Major Brady, the best XO. <laughs> Right, S.M. Um, no, but I am extremely proud to be the executive officer to the 17th Star Major of the Army. And as all of you have just heard, I'm here to announce who the, winner, who the winners of the best squad competition, the NCO, and the soldier of 2023 will be. But to help me with this announcement today, I thought I would do it just a little bit differently, break the mold just a little bit, and bring my battle buddy with me, Star Major Osvaldo Martinez. Come on, Marty. <laughs> But first, but first, what a turnout. Um, I don't know if any of you had an opportunity to be here last year, um, but aside from the fact um, from last year, this year, we were able to bring all 12 squads to compete at the board and to come to AUSA, so that's, that's pretty awesome. But I think the real reason for the full crowd today and, and for standing room only is because you all heard how awesome I am and how extremely funny and charismatic I am, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, team SMA, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Somebody thinks I am. All right, okay. So today we have 12 commands from across the Army who have competed under the most challenging conditions. 12 squads, 60 soldiers from all over the world, 24 states, and even an island country of Jamaica. Where are you at? Somewhere out there. I know, I looked. I looked at all your records. You got some quiet out there. Nobody wants them. <laughs> Okay. Well, Sergeant Major Brady, thank you for allowing me to be here with you today and share in the recognition of these outstanding soldiers. Over the last 11 days, these soldiers... <laughs> Good job. I appreciate it. <laughs> Over the last 11 days, these soldiers have worked extremely hard with the tenacity and grit and most with a smile. As a matter of fact, there's one who couldn't kick the smile off, and that's uh, Sergeant First Cup Class Caleb Richardson. Where are you at from MedCom? Stand up, stand up, please. And also, the, the soldier that you saw on the screen, Specialist Paso. <laughs> all right, right from there, that, that, always smiling. So, thank you. So, to acknowledge all that they have done to, and to get right to the point, I want to call out each of the commands in recognition. And we ask that you represent each one of these commands as we call them out with your motto and appreciation. So, get pretty wild, get crazy, get excited. Let's everybody, let everybody who's out there wonder what the heck's going on in here. So we're going to call each one of the commands and you follow with your motto. So for example, if I say force comm, you say? Freedom's guardian. Cool. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Here we go. Team one, force comm. Freedom's guardian. Team two, trade off. Team three, AFC. Team four, AMC. Team five, Army National Guard. Team six, United States Army Reserves. Team seven, USRAF. Team eight, United States Army Pacific. Team nine, USASOC. Team 10, United States Army Cyber. Team 11, MedCom. Army Medicine is Army School! And Team 12, the Military District of Washington. All right. Well, I got to tell you, Sergeant Major Brady, I am excited to find out who the winner is. And I will tell you, I've been for the last couple of days trying to find out. And so Sergeant Major Brady wouldn't share. And so I said, okay, let me come up with some incentives. So I offered to pick up the coffee for the office for the next two weeks. She said no. I said, all right. I offered to ensure that the office had enough hair gel for the SMA for the next four years. And as you can imagine, it would be a lot of hair gel. She said no. She said no. <laughs> and then lastly, I threw it all out there and I said, 
Sergeant Major, what if I give you my jalapeno cheese bread from my next MRE? And she still said no. So she has been dedicated to ensuring that the winner remains under lock and key until now. So Sergeant Major. You're right, Sergeant Major. I was saving the announcement for the exact moment. Lieutenant General Pyatt, would you please join me? Come on, sir. And the SMA. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and get started, but I'm going to start with the third and second place team. I would like for that, those teams to stand up to be recognized. And then the number one team will have you come to the stage, okay? So it is my extreme pleasure and honor to announce the best squad for third place is User Pack. The second best squad of 2023 is Medcom. Hey. And finally, what you've all been waiting for, the best squad of 2023 is United Special Army, United Special Army, United Special, <laughs> United, use a sock, there you go. The members of the squad are Staff Sergeant Ewing, Sergeant Phillips, Specialist McGuire, Specialist Moncharka, and Specialist Moon. Okay, the next thing is, yes, who said that? The best XO? That's right, that's right. The best soldier of 2023 is Specialist McGuire. And the best non-commissioned officer of 2023 is Sergeant Phillips. I don't know how you follow that. I'm a little speechless, but let's give those warriors one more big round of applause. Hmm. Now, normally, normally, that would be the end of the show. But you know what? SMA, he told me, we're going to do things bigger and better, and we're going to be all you can be. I said, all right. SMA, I, I don't know what else I could do. He said, I want, I want more, Sergeant Major. I want more. 
So at this time, we are proud to present the All-American Chorus based out of Fort Liberty, North Carolina, and led by Sergeant First Class Miguel Davis. The All-American Chorus embodies the hearts and souls of the paratroopers past and present for the 82nd Airborne Division. Compiled from paratroopers across the division, the chorus performs traditional cadences, Americana, and select vocal arrangements of popular tunes to uphold the tradition of the airborne legacy as the face of America Guard of Honor. Fresh off their America's Got Talent tour, please join me in welcoming the now world famous 82nd Airborne All American Chorus. <laughs> chorus, attention! Forward, march! Left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left, 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 left. Right, left, mark time, march, course, halt, park parade, rest. Ten minutes. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, what you are about to experience are some of the live actions and commands given inside of a C-130 or C-17 high-performance aircraft just before your 82nd Airborne Division jumps into the darkness of the night. Check equipment! Sound off work for me, check! Okay! One minute. Get ready. Go. go. Here we go. Here we go. All the way. All the way. Gotta be. Gotta be. Rough and tough. Rough and tough. Airborne. Airborne. Every day. Every day. We run. We run. To the sun. To the sun. No sweat. No sweat. Not yet. Not yet. Down in the mess all on my knees. Down in the mess all on my knees. I got nothing to eat but a can of beans. Nothing to eat but a can of beans. Bread was molded and the meat was bad. The bread was molded and the meat was bad. And you know darn well that you can't eat that. Hey! You know darn well that you can't eat that. Here we go. Here we go. All the way. All the way. Gotta be. Gotta be. Rough and tough. Rough and tough. Hey! Born. Hey! Born. Oh. The way, all the way. When I was young, I always wanted to be in the 82nd Airborne, my knees in the breeze. But now that I'm here, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to jump from an aircraft while in flight. All the way, airborne, airborne, all the way, driving on, driving on. All the way, airborne, airborne, all the way, driving on, driving on. Morning in the drizzling rain when I picked up my parachute and boarded the plane. Jump master said one minute to go and the green light lit with a chilling glow. All the way airborne, airborne, all the way driving on, driving on, driving on. Driving on. All the way airborne, airborne, all the way driving on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the 82nd Airborne Division All-American Chorus. We hail from the great Fort Liberty of North Carolina, which is home of the Airborne, and the 82nd Airborne Division is America's Guard of Honor. On behalf of our Commanding General, Major General Christopher Leneve, and our Division Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Randolph De La Pena, we would like to let you know 
There he is. We would like to let you know what an honor and a privilege it is to be singing for you here today. But before we begin, I must remind you that these individuals standing behind me are not just talented singers. They are first and foremost paratroopers for life. We have soldiers from the infantry, Follow me. service and support, Come. aviation, Above the bed. artillery, Come. and the Corps of Engineers. And you dig it! Now, the All-American Chorus was formed in 1964, and that very same year, The Temptations released their hit song, My Girl. For 50 years, the chorus has been singing this wonderful song, and recently, we performed it for our initial audition on America's Got Talent. Please enjoy this performance. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. And when it's cold outside, I got the month of May. Well, I guess you say, what, what can, can make me feel this way? My girl. My girl. I'm talking about my, my girl. My girl. I've got so much honey. My girl, my girl. Here we go. Here we go. All the way. All the way. Rough and tough, rough and tough. Bo diddly, bo diddly, have you heard? Bo diddly, bo diddly, have you heard? We're gonna jump from a big on bird. We're gonna jump from a big on bird. Stand up, hook up, shuffle to the door. Stand up, hook up, shuffle to the door. And leap right out and count to four. Leap right out and count to four. And if my mane don't open wide, if my mane don't open wide, I've got a reserve by my side. I've got a reserve by my side. Here we go, here we go, all the way, all the way. Gotta be, gotta be rough and tough, rough and tough. Hey, la di la di la de. Hey, la di la di lo. Hey, la di la di la de. Hey, la di la di lo. The G.I. Grits and the G.I. Gravy. Hey, la di la di lo. We're so glad we didn't join the Navy. Hey, la di la di lo. Well, the G.I. Dane and the G.I. Doe. Hey, la di la di lo. We're so glad that we're airborne. Hey, la di la di lo. Here we go. Hey, la di la di lo. And have an airborne day. Forward, march, left, right on left, right on left, right, left, your left, right, your left, right, left, left, get it, step, get it, step, right, left, your left, 
right, your left, right, left, 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 right, left. I know what you're thinking. I should have paid money to come here. Well, there's still a chance. No, I'm just kidding. Let's give the 82nd Airborne All-American Chorus another big round of applause. <laughs> You truly do inspire all of us, and you made us all proud as you showed the world who soldiers were on that great American talent show. Thank you. Oh. All right. Well, I got nothing left, Sergeant Major. Can I close this thing out? Close it out. All right. Cool. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the BASH, certified by the Chief of Staff of the Army event here at the annual meeting, AUSA. What I'd like at this time is if the best squad would please come back forward. And as we leave, the senior leaders can shake their hands. I would ask also that the sponsors that came here today to recognize our best squad remain here so they can give them their um, accolades for what they've done and to have an opportunity to take pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today, and we wish you all well, and enjoy the rest of the 2023 AUSA Annual Meeting.